Hi guys, welcome back to Coffee Time. We've got Lucia in our studio today. Hi Lucia, how are you? Hi, how are you Ash? I'm good, thanks. How was your day? Yeah, it was very hot today, but <laughs> <laughs> like always, Melbourne's always so many weathers in one day. That's one day right. it can be rainy, one day it can be so sunny. And it's summertime, so we have to enjoy as much as we can, I guess. Absolutely. <laughs> so Lucia, tell us more about yourself. What do you do? And I do know you've been a pageant winner as well. Yes. So my name is Lucia Hu and I'm the reigning 2017 Miss Oceana oh, Globe. For the Miss, thank you. For the Mrs. Australia Globe group um, here in Australia, which is uh, serves the Miss, Ms and Mrs. Okay. So basically anyone over 21 years of age married or 25 unmarried, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, 24 unmarried can actually yep. enter um, for this pageant. And then whoever wins goes on to the uh, compete in the World International Pageant, which is the world's largest and longest consecutive running pageant in the world, which is the Mrs. Globe. Wow, and when is this pageant? Uh, actually, I leave in three weeks. Oh, <laughs> there you go, I'm lucky I asked you that. You so last ask. year, I actually won uh, the crown as well. I won okay. uh, Miss Coral Sea and the People's Choice, which is two awards. And I went to China to actually compete again. You did? Yes, I did. And how was the pageant there? It was fantastic. It was so amazing and huge compared to what Australia um, does. Uh, and over there, we actually competed against 60 countries in the whole world. Wow. I came in the top 15, uh, which um, I never even thought I would ever get um, into that level. Then I was chosen as the regional favourite of the world from the international pageant to be recrowned this year as Miss Oceana. So I now not only look after Australia but seven countries wow, around the ocean. Wow, that is so region. amazing. Thank Thank you. You. How do you do it? Like, um, tell us more about your family. Like, do you have uh, kids? And I do. How? So I have two children. One little girl who oh, is <laughs> seven years old, and my little son is nine. So for a living, I do, um, as a hobby, I do photography. Mm -hmm. I, I'm an award-winning photographer, wow. as well as I own my own building and maintenance company. Oh, really? So I manage that, as well as um, most of my other time, I do charity. That's nice, that's nice. So is the pageant international different to what you've done over here? Is it like more like a higher level? Oh, it's Absolutely. kind of similar to here. Well, I've never been in a pageant before. This was my actual first pageant I've ever been in. Mm -hmm. I'm actually over 40 years old. <laughs> wow, you look so young. Thank you. <laughs> so I entered the pageant when I was fabulous and 40. <laughs> and um, I was actually approached by yeah. a former Mrs. Australia. And she said, we're, we're actually after a woman like you to represent Australia. And I said, oh, I don't even know how to wear makeup, let alone own any. And I don't know anything about pageantry. Yeah. I'm probably the wrong person to approach. And she said, no, we're after women, not so much beautiful on the outside only, but beautiful in the inside. And I've been working alongside her yes. with charities for the last four years. So she's seen my heart inside and thought, you know, I would be a great candidate to... Of course. Um, and pageant is not all about, training. obviously, outside how you look. It's more of what inside is and what you can take out of yourself, I Absolutely. guess. Absolutely. And work on yourself. And I guess that's the main purpose of this pageant is to work on yourself. Absolutely. Rather than what you are. So already. the pageant <laughs> has made me... Uh, I've been the same, yes. but it's made me more. So more passionate, more compassionate and given me more as well on a high level. So now I have a platform that mm -hmm. I can actually help um, more people with mm -hmm. and uh, a platform that I can actually reach out to right. other people to talk about um, my projects or yep. things that I care about. Talking about projects, I believe that you're working on a project called Project Karma. Yes. Tell us a bit more about it. So I'm very project. excited about Project Karma. I'm the first official ambassador in Australia for Project Karma. Project Karma is an Australian uh, organisation, it's an Australian born charity yep. and um, what it is actually saves children from sex slavery and sex exploitation all around Southeast Asia. Okay. At the moment it's in its infancy stage mm -hmm. but we were um, uh, running a launch project next week where we will be seeing Project Karma more often in the media and even uh, 60 Minutes oh, is wow. covering the story as well. Um, yeah, so we were also um, 
So tell us, like, what does, obviously you've told us about child trafficking and stuff. What else does the Project Karma do? So like what it aims to do in the future? Yes, so at the moment we've set up a Sentinel project that will see um, eight crisis centres set up in eight countries. And countries, do you know? On yeah. Top of yeah. Oh, yeah, so most of them are my own home countries, that's why I'm so passionate about okay. them too, which yep. is Laos, Indonesia, Bali. Um, we've got Vietnam, um, mm -hmm. Cambodia, um, Thailand. So we've got a whole lot of range uh, across the Southeast Asia region and the Philippines, yep. which are the main targets for sex exploitation wow. and sex slavery around Southeast Asia. It's good that you guys are making a move to go out in other countries and stopping this child trafficking from happening. Absolutely. So I've worked with many ch charities um, for the last four years and I've seen them grow from the infancy stage mm. to a stage where they're um, well covered in the media as yeah. well as in um, programs at schools as well. So I believe that awareness will help any mm -hmm. organisation or any great deed out there um, turn into something and change the world. Mm. So with Project Come, it's still in its infancy stage at the moment, but with the help of government officials and awareness, spreading awareness, we hope to change all the yeah. laws. In fact, um, with the help of Darren Hitch, we were able to um, be the fastest law changer um, in history in Australia, changing wow. the laws um, through government, mm -hmm. uh, being able to stop uh, repeat sex offenders to mm -hmm. leave the country into those vulnerable countries. That's really nice. Yes. I mean, that, that is kind of a step we are looking to work for and that is what you guys have exactly done. So, talking about Project Karma, like, me sitting here, I thought Australia was safe. I never knew that there's something like this will be happening in Australia too. So, how is it, it different in Australia compared to the rest of the world? Sure. So, sex exploitation and sex trafficking often obviously happens around the world. We have laws in place here to actually minimise the risks mm -hmm. and stop um, offenders. Okay. Where compared to overseas, there is minimal um, things done because of poverty being mm -hmm. one of the main things. So what our Sentinel project aims to do is educate the actual uh, communities yeah. and author authorities um, in the communities to work together with us to set laws in place to um, try to stop or make it harder for them to come in and keep the trade up. So in the end of the day, um, they will um, find it harder to go into mm -hmm. the countries and do this as a business, so they'll slowly stop. So from um, our research at the moment, we have approximately two million children um, around Southeast Asia who are trapped in the sex slave Wow, um, that's a lot of children. It is, it, it, it makes me really sad. It yeah. is really sad, like, like, obviously it does make me sad, but sitting here I thought we were all safe, but I never looked beyond my boundaries to see what's happening. And now that you brought this beautiful topic on board, and I'm sure the audience will love this as well, your work and everything that you're doing with Project Karma. Now tell me, what is the difference between tra a child trafficking and exploitation? So sex exploitation can actually happen anywhere. It can happen in your own home. It can happen um, with your next door neighbour. Wow. So sex exploitation is um, widely um, as an evil here, mm -hmm. you know, in Australia as well as everywhere else. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have all the sex abuse and children who are mistreated. So sex trade, um, because there's laws put in place here to make it hard um, to um, traffic our children from Australia, they go into vulnerable countries like Southeast Asia where the poverty there is enormous. So they target those victims mm. and um, you know because of poverty some parents actually um, sell the kids up as well. Um, is that how the it process works, like selling the kids? Well, it's it's not as easy as that. So a lot of people get angered by the issue and they don't understand it much. But yeah. um, normally with predators, they go into these countries and they groom the children. Mm -hmm. So they groom the parents and the children to make them believe they'll have a better life. For example, if they um, you know sell their children, they'll marry them off in hope with a richer person and a better life. So. 
you know, grooming is all about um, identifying a person in the village, yeah. thinking he's there to save your children, and he's and that's there not to exactly no. how it is. Mo most, very sad. yeah, most children get sold off. Um, they they are believed to be married off. Uh, you know, uh, after they've um, been trafficked, trafficked um, past their waters and. Um, unfortunately, they become prostitutes. And yeah, isn't there any laws which can stop that Absolutely. in those countries? So at the moment, um, the founder of Project Karma is Glenn Hurley. He's he's like the real deal superhero. He goes out there, he investigates undercover, he stops the crime, he catches the criminals, he saves the children, oh. and that is why we're trying to set up um, these crisis centres to help rehabilitate these children and also educate the community um, by teaching them how to feed themselves mm -hmm. by building agriculture. Example, examples are like rice fields mm -hmm. um, so that they won't be vulnerable uh, to the outside predators as well as work with the actual community leaders mm -hmm. um, to put laws in place in each of these countries wow. so we can deter against. And from the video I remember that 5.5 million Childs are affected or children are affected by these, isn't it? Absolutely. Have it's, you got any cases in Australia that has happened or it's all international cases that we're hearing at the moment? At the moment, because Australia has its laws in place, the, the people who, who have founded this project are all Australian. So it's an Australian-born mm -hmm. charity. Yeah. We find that um, most of these predators are from Australia. Wow. And, you know, to be fair, uh, we've tried everything we can to stop um, the predators from going out of our country and going mm -hmm. back. Um, in fact, Glenn Hurley has put behind bars um, the biggest criminals that have not only murdered children um, in this process, like the, the stories that you read throughout the whole um, court cases will, is so so bad that it, it just brings tears to people's eyes and so hard to watch from children as young as one years old. That's right. Yeah. So I'm just amazed how parents are like, I know poverty is the reason where parents do so, well they're groomed to sell off their kids, but I'm amazed like, don't parents think that, you know, there's attachment between the child and... Absolutely. Look, there's so many factors involved. Imagine um, out there you have a parent who has many children and um, imagine that one child can just go and work um, as a sex slave to feed the rest because or they'll just starve to death. So sometimes sacrifice they find is necessary mm. in a famine country and unfortunately these things happen and it's hard to understand unless you are so starving and you see your kids starve like that. You know, I guess education is another part where kids should, uh, the parents should learn to know how to. Absolutely. How many kids are in the family? It's not, you know, family planning wise and stuff like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So that is why Project Calmness, its Sentinel project that it's brought out, is so important to us. Is because we actually work with the villagers and the community leaders to educate the community, and also we are reaching so many schools overseas to educate the children themselves. Um, you know, to be aware of sex exploitation and uh, the community to see how they can change and not have to do that. So it's all about culture, culture change, culture education, that there are better ways and to give a better life for the children. Of course, there's always a better life to give to a children. Like, I, I guess it's, we have to choose our own life for our Absolutely. kids as well. And I guess education plays a role in this place over here. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, what is your role in Project Karma? I know that you've been talking about it, but is there a specific role that you've been assigned that, yes, I'm gonna go out there and do this and that? So I'm the first official ambassador for mm -hmm. Project Karma. Yeah. An ambassador's role is to use her voice, mm -hmm. um, her publicity, her voice yeah. to go out there and speak about it. So um, with pageantry, for example, a lot of people go out, they have different uh, mindsets, whether they wanna become a model or a movie star or news, their platform for different purposes. I chose my platform uh, to speak um, for Project Karma and for um, lots of other charities that mm -hmm. they can't use their voice mm -hmm. to speak themselves. That's right. And that's a wonderful job. So will we be seeing you going overseas as well to all these villages? 
Yeah. Absolutely. That that's my dream to be able to get my hands dirty. Um, you know, if I can um, help build the rice fields and ride the oxes, and <laughs> and I think that's a wonderful job to do because obviously talking does help, but going and experiencing what the actual villages are facing, what are the reasons they are forced to do that, by educating them or by giving some information, I think that you will help them to groom them as well. Absolutely. From thinking positive, negative to positive, you know what I mean? So I aspire to inspire yeah. um, and empower others. So in my role as ambassador, I hope to be a big part of Project Karma where I can actually get involved with the community. Obviously, I won't be getting my hands um, all that pretty, <laughs> but I hope to be able to hold a child to help them um, to give them options. That's right. And to use my voice for a bigger power across the world to save all these children. That's right. And, um, you know, years to come, I know that um, from an infancy stage, every charity, charity with awareness and with people backing it up, um, slowly it will grow. And one day I hope that all these countries will have uh, a great um, new system in place where, you know, the, the poorer villages uh, won't be vulnerable to these, these kind of atrocities anymore. So, um, I know you're setting up centres for these kids. What are the future for these kids that you're looking for? Obviously, you've said that you will teach them how to plant and yeah. all those growing... So, at the moment, moment um, the sad uh, research and statistics show that even if we save children, they're being put into orphanages yes. or given back to their, to parents. their parents. The sad part is that these orphanages play a very big part in actually sex exploitation themselves um, because money is a very big evil when it comes mm. to um, poverty and things like that. And um, they exploit the kids. Some orphanages really exploit the kids um, and are the reason why the kids become prostitutes and um, are sold off in sex trafficking. Also the parents, when you give it back to the parents, the parents don't know what else to do. It's another extra mouth they need to feed. Although they love their children, they have also other children to feed. So um, there's always no wrong or no right. Everyone has a story that they have to tell and some cultural, um, uh, not the least, but cultural um, ways is thinking well you know sex is just sex and if it's going to feed the, feed us you know uh, we can survive some some people um, you know live on survival where we we have so much here in Australia so we can't understand sometimes so the Western society has um, a very hard time to understand all these problems as well. So at the moment, um, children are either being put back into orphanages or given back to their parents. And the difference is some orphanages are very evil in that they are the reason why um, there's sex exploitation because they traffic the children from orphanages mm -hmm. um, as it's easier to target um, the vulnerable kids as well as the parents. When you give it back to the parents, if the parents can't feed the children, the same cycle happens. So with these centres set up around Southeast Asia, we hope to give them new options, give them better options in the community of not only education, but um, giving the children um, the option to live better lives. That's right. Yeah, through our care. That's really sweet of your organisation. Now, is there anything that you want the public to do to help your organisation as well? Absolutely. So that is why I'm using my voice for. We're actually looking for um, sponsors and donors and basically people who are um, happy to be ambassadors as well with their voices and carry on. Awareness is a big thing and it's everything when it comes to building up a charity, building up a cause to actually have make it work. So get behind Project Karma, you can find I'm out more. I'm behind it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, through projectkarma.org.au um, or you can contact myself. Um, I'm all over social media with Theo who is my name <laughs> through the Mrs Australia Globe Group um, to find out more on how you can get involved. But in February and March we aim to have a huge big ball and I hope everyone will come. Lucia, thank you so much for coming on the show and it's been my pleasure, Ash.
Thank you. And putting all this uh, positive message to our audience too, and you're doing an absolutely amazing job. Thank you. And I'm sure you'll be successful, and I'm sure all the audience will be behind you with sponsors, donation, anything you want. And I would wish you all the best for the launch as well. And we'll be following you on Facebook and your website as well for more information. Thank you. Thanks.